Hello everybody, welcome to another Yellow Chair devotional. We're going to look at another book of the Bible together. We only have a handful of books left, isn't that crazy? 66 total books, man that's 66 days, but here we are, almost done, time just flies. In every single book that we've explored together, we have seen that even though there's 66 different books, the Bible is one big book telling us about God's love for us. It's his love story, his love letter to us, and his desire to save us, to have a friendship with us. God wants us to want him. And so today we're going to be again in the general epistles, letters written by a variety of authors. Yesterday we were in 1 Peter, today we're in 2 Peter. So this is the second letter that Peter wrote. Now remember, Peter, he was one of the 12 disciples. He walked and talked with Jesus. He was a close friend of Jesus. And he is giving some insight into what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So grab your Bible. Let's turn to 2 Peter together. So if we start at the back of our Bibles in Revelation, we just have to flip a few pages and you'll be in 2 Peter. Now, throughout the entire birth of Christianity, right, there hadn't been that Christian church before. There were always these false teachers. False teachers meaning they weren't probably saying silly stuff like, you have to wear purple to church. It wasn't probably crazy stuff like that. It was stuff that was so close to being true, but just enough where you were like, well, maybe that's what we should do. And Peter's going, hey, here is an example. And, and, I, and I think about it in this way. It, <clears throat> excuse me, we're gonna see in our verses here some of, the, some of the characteristics of our lives when we're followers of Jesus. For example, I am more kind because God has shown me such kindness his kindness then flows out of me, right? It's a fruit of the spirit. And because I have the spirit in my heart, I am going to have this kindness to me that doesn't have strings attached. And here's what I mean by that. Have you ever been kind to your sibling, kind to your friend, kind to an adult because you're hoping to get some praise? You're hoping to get some positive attention? You know, there was a bedtime story that I grew up with and maybe you heard it. It's from Uncle Arthur's bedtime story. And it was a story of two Carolines. I think her name was Caroline. And when Caroline was at school, oh, she was an angel. She was so good to her teacher, so nice to all of her friends, so polite, so helpful, so kind. She was just an angel. But when Caroline went home, Oh, if mom asked her for help, oh, why do you always make me do chores? Right? She was just a different Caroline. She didn't want to help her mother. She didn't want to be kind to her siblings. She was just grouchy and grumpy and not the nice Caroline that we see at school. And so how surprising one day when her teacher comes over for supper and her teacher sees Caroline being a grouch instead of the little angel that the teacher knew from school. And Caroline realized that she was being two different people. And how often do we find ourselves being two different people? Or maybe we are kind because we want someone's attention. Oh, they're such a good kid. Oh, they're so great. Or how many times do we have knowledge so that someone's impressed with how smart we are and we kind of show off maybe a little bit. But when we're followers of Jesus, we have already gained everything there is to gain, right? Is God already impressed with us whether we know everything or not? Yes, because we're his kids. We're part of his family. Does God love us no matter what? Absolutely. Are we saved because of Jesus and all we do is believe? Yes. So there's nothing else for us to gain by putting on a show. By putting on a show. The true heart of, Christ, of a Christian that Peter is going to talk about here doesn't have an underlying motive. We're not nice just because. No. 
It's because that's part of who we are in Christ. God has been so loving to us. Of course, I want to be loving to other people. Not so I can make a good impression, but it's just part of who I am because of the Holy Spirit living in my heart. So pay attention as we read these verses here in 2 Peter and keep that in mind that they were struggling with these false teachings. They were struggling with this, maybe the two Caroline story of, oh, well, I show all of these Christian life characteristics at the right times, but inside, am I really that way? Hmm. So hopefully you found Second Peter by now. We're going to read chapter 1, starting at verse 3. Chapter 1, starting at verse 3. And here is what Peter says. Jesus has the power of God. He, his power has given us everything we need to live and to serve God. We have these things because we know him. Jesus called us by his glory and goodness. Through his glory and goodness, he gave us the very great and rich gifts he promised us. With those gifts, you can share in being like God. And so the world will not ruin you with its evil desires. Because you have these blessings, you should try as much as you can to add these things to your lives, to your faith, add goodness. To your goodness, add knowledge. And to your knowledge, add self-control. And to your self-control, add the ability to hold on. And to your ability to hold on, add service to God. And to your service for God, add kindness for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And to this kindness, add love. If all these things are in you and are growing they will help you never be useless. They will help your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ make your lives better. But if anyone does not have these things, he cannot see clearly. He is blind. He has forgotten that he was made clean from his past sins. My brothers, God called you and chose you to be his. Try hard to show that you really are God's chosen people. If you do all these things, you will never fail and you will be given a very great welcome into the kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That kingdom continues forever. You know these things and you are very strong in the truth, but I will always help you to remember these things. I think it is right for me to help you remember while I am still living here on earth. I know that I must soon leave this body. Our Lord Jesus Christ has shown me that. I will try the best I can to help you remember these things always. I want you to be able to remember them even after I am gone. All right, so Peter is saying, I don't have much longer here with you guys. Take take my wisdom and knowledge that the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you. I'm going to keep encouraging, keep teaching you as long as I live. But Peter was facing persecution too. He'd been thrown in prison. He had people after him. And we do know that Peter ends up dying because he will not stop spreading the good news of Jesus. And so he goes, this is so important, guys. But did you catch all of those characteristics? Goodness, knowledge, self-control, perseverance, service, kindness, and love. Everything we see, kindness for your brothers and sisters, and in this kindness and love. Over and over, if we don't have those parts of our life, then it's like we're blind. We're not seeing the true story here. We're not seeing what it's really like because... Jesus has made our lives better. Jesus has forgotten that we are, have been clean from our past sins. So as a result, we are so clean and forgiven that we're going to forgive others. We're so loved that we're going to love others. God has been so kind to us. We're going to be kind to others. Do you see how it's this big circle of being filled and then giving, filled and giving? What a blessing that is. Because it said in verse 3, Jesus has the power of God and his power has been given to us. Everything we need to live and serve God. And so the world won't ruin us because we've got God. We're going to read the next chunk of verses here, verse 16. And think about, again, this is Peter saying, We have told you about the powerful coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What we told you were not just some invented stories, but we saw the greatness of Jesus with our own eyes. 
Jesus heard the voice of God, the greatest glory. That was when Jesus received honor and glory from God the Father. The voice said, this is my son and I love him. I am very pleased with him. We heard that voice. It came from heaven while we were with Jesus on the holy mountain. This makes us more sure about the message the prophets gave. And it is good for you to follow closely what they said. Their message is like a light shining in a dark place. The light shines until the day begins and the morning star rises in your hearts. Most of all, you must understand this. No prophecy in the scriptures ever comes from the prophet's own interpretation. No prophecy ever came from what a man wanted to say, but men led by the Holy Spirit spoke words from God. So here Peter is saying, I saw Jesus. I heard the voice of God reign over Jesus. You're my beloved son in whom I will please. He goes, I know this because I was there. And he goes, we can see that these false teachings is them reading what the prophets wrote in like the Old Testament. And they've got different ideas on what it means. And he goes, no, it's what the Holy Spirit leads and shows. We know what Jesus was teaching. If it's important to God, it's clear in his word. God's not going to contradict himself. Jesus doesn't cancel out something and say, oh, well, yeah, that was said over here. And now, I no, it's one big story. It all fits together. God's love story for you and me. And so if there is something in the Old Testament, remember when we grappled with some of those hard verses where it seemed like God was being punishing or was being harsh? But in light of what we know of Jesus, in light of the God that we know throughout the Bible, is God's heart always based in his love for us? Yes. Does God always want to be close to us? Yes. And so we have to see the big picture, the big picture. And when we see that big picture, we are filled and it flows out of us. We're filled and it flows out. It's not the two Carolines. It's not the God that we see in the Old Testament and the Jesus that we see in the New Testament. It's the whole Bible. We want to be just one Caroline where we have the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit flowing out of us with love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Those gifts are present in our lives. We have them now because we have the Spirit. And so in those times when maybe we're not feeling like, like the Caroline, we're feeling like a grumpy Caroline, we go, God, I know that I'm a kind person. I know that I'm a patient person. And I want that to flow out of me and to make a difference in the world around me. So that like Peter said here, so that we can share these gifts with everyone. With these gifts you share in being like God. And the world and its evil desires won't have a rule over you. We want everyone to know that God has gifts for them. And we can all participate in those special gifts together. Let's say a prayer and close our time. Dear God, we are thankful that you fill us and then you flow out of us. We don't have to try to be more patient. We are patient because you live in our hearts and the fruit of the Spirit is patience. And so when we become in tune to that, those gifts flow out of us and they make a difference. We're not two Carolines. We're not God of the Old Testament and Jesus of the New Testament. We see over and over again, like Peter says, we are your beloved children in whom you are well pleased. And because of that, we want to be loving. We want to be kind. We want to be forgiven. Be forgiving because you have forgiven us. We thank you so much for your love in your name. Amen. All right. There's discussion questions in the video description below. And our takeaway verse for 2 Peter is 2 Peter 1 verse 3, where it says, His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his glory and goodness. So we've been called by the glory and goodness of God and his divine power. Man, it has given us everything required, everything required. We have it and now we can give it. We have it. Now we can give it. Be thinking about that today. How can I give what I've received from God? And when we become those givers, oh, we all benefit from the blessings of what God is doing in our lives. I'll see you tomorrow.